So now let's explore the question of why alcoholics get a fatty liver. In a previous video, I've already explained that ethanol, TOH, can't talk. I already explained that ethanol uh, gets converted into acetaldehyde, aldehyde, which further gets broken down into acetate. And this is all catalyzed by the reaction or the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase and acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. And these two enzymes in the breakdown of alcohol is going to require NAD and it gets converted to NADH. Same here, NAD to NADH. So in an alcoholic, what we're going to have is we're going to have uh, a lot of alcohol ingestion, primarily alcohol ingestion. Alcohol, severe alcoholics typically don't uh, take in much else besides alcohol. So we're going to have a massive buildup of NADH. We're going to have lots of NADH production. And this is, this is going to be the basis for what we're going to work around today. So now let's try and figure out the question, why? does an increase in NADH cause a fatty liver in an alcoholic? And also the metabolic acidosis and, and whatnot. So, uh, so the first concept is how do we get rid of this NADH? Well, the body has two main mechanisms for this. And that's going to be the breakdown of pyruvate. And uh, that's going to get broken down into lactic acid. So we'll have a lactate. Uh, this is going to be your anaerobic pathway, uh, you may have noticed, where, where we're going to use lactate dehydrogenase to recycle our NAD. So lactate dehydrogenase enzyme, and that's going to convert NADH, NADH, into our more usable form again, NAD. So then this NAD can go off in the body and, and it helps out with a whole bunch of different reactions. So the goal of this reaction is to convert a pyruvate into a lactic acid. And then that lactic acid will go through the Cori cycle and the liver, um, but that, that's a different story. So we can convert pyruvate into lactic acid, lactic acid, which can help contribute to our metabolic acidosis. Okay, so there, there is our metabolic acidosis component. When, when we have increased NADH, because we're making a lot of NADH, that NADH can get recycled by converting pyruvate to lactate, which gives us our lactic acidosis. So that's excellent. So now, where can we go from here? Well, there's another pathway that the body's gonna use. We, we have option one here. So we have option one. We also have another option the body can use to help break down this NADH into a more usable form. And that's going to be using malate dehydrogenase. So this is going to be the conversion. I can find a better marker. This is going to be the conversion of OAA to malate. So uh, if, if these look familiar to you, it's because we already talked about them. Uh, this is going to be in the TCA cycle, but um, there we go. TCA cycle. Uh, but this is actually in reverse. So I'm going to erase this. We all know that we have a high NADH. I'm going to just turn the camera just so make sure this is going to be covered. So let's let's revisit that TCA cycle, but not the whole thing. Let's just take a look. So we have acetyl-CoA. Pyruvate gets broken down by pyruvate dehydrogenase, the decarboxylation reaction. Uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase does this bad boy. We're going to do that. Citrate. This is OAA, oxaloacetate. We're still working, I'm kind of working in a backwards direction. This is going to be malate. 
So, so this should kind of help a little. Mainly dehydrogenase is going to catalyze the reverse reaction. So mainly dehydrogenase. So this is where we're acting. Pyruvate, on the other hand, can get converted to the lactate, the lactic acid, lactate, and that's going to be the lac lactate dehydrogenase. Okay, so we're starting to piece this together. What what is happening? Well, we're decreasing uh, car uh, carbohydrate breakdown. The TCA cycle is going to break down a whole bunch of carbohydrates, uh, also amino acids and fats. But what we're doing is we're shunting the pyruvate into a lactic acid form instead of using it to drive energy reactions to create ATP. Also, we're taking parts of TCA cycle and putting them in reverse. Well, we all know that that's not going to generate a whole bunch of ATP, but that's not our goal. We're trying to lower the NADH reactions. So, so that's what our body is attempting to do right now. So what does the net result? Well, we already said that we're going to have a lactic acidemia, so we're going to have an acidosis in the blood, but we're also going to have now so we just decreased some NADH, but we increased our malate. Uh, our bodies increased their malate. Well, that's not good. So how do we get rid of that malate? Well, we have malic enzymes, which we're going to use. And that's going to convert malate into pyruvate. Malate into pyruvate. So we have this being an increased now, since we're converting uh, OAA and malate. So malic, I'm just gonna I just realized, okay, you should be able to see that. So now we're converting malate into pyruvate. We're gonna convert it back using malic enzymes. And what this is gonna do is NADP. into an NADPH. Okay, so we had an increased malate. We're going to convert it to pyruvate, because then that pyruvate can, uh, can work down the system. However, in the process, we just made yet another excess. So we went from an increased NADPH, or an NADH, now to an increased malate, and now we have an increased NADPH. Whew, this is getting confusing. All right, so let's, let's kind of synthesize the last part here uh, and then tie everything together at the very end. So NADPH is going to be used in fatty acid synthesis. I'll get out of the way in just a second. So an increase in NADPH is going to drive the fatty acid synthesis. So let's, let's recall. NADPH is required for fatty acid synthesis. What we're going to do is we're going to convert an acetyl-CoA, an acetyl-CoA into a malonyl-CoA. So, oh, malonyl-CoA, that'll eventually get broken down through a series of steps into a Aminic acid, which is a 16 carbon fatty acid. So uh, a palmitate is going to be our final goal. So palmitic acid is our fatty acid. Uh, when we have an alcoholic come in, we're going to have an increase in this palmitic acid, and uh, that's our 16 carbon chain fatty acid. Thus, oh, look at how that worked. That, finally get to our fatty fatty liver. So let's let's cover the basics again. Let me just kind of make sure we're getting everything. Okay. Okay, that should be good. No. My apologies. Okay. So we're going to take a look at the top really quick and then work our way down. So we've got our alcohol, acetaldehyde, acetate. This is going to produce are high amounts of NADH. That high amount of NADH is going to be degraded. So we're going to be degraded we're 
we're going to be degraded by two mechanisms, by route one, which is going to be where we convert pyruvate into lactate using lactate dehydrogenase. This will get rid of some of this excess NADH. So we're recycling our NAD. So we have another option where we can convert the NADH into an NAD using the malate dehydrogenase enzyme. And that's going to be where uh, this side comes in. The malate dehydrogenase is going to go in an opposite way of the TCA cycle, converting OAA into malate. That malate is going to be in excess now. That's not good, so we'll use malic enzymes to convert it into pyruvate. And these malic enzymes will create NADPHs. We have an increase in NADPHs now. That increase in NADPH is going to drive our fatty acid synthesis. And our fatty acid synthesis is pretty much where we take these acetyl coas and convert them into a 16 carbon fatty acid chain. Because if we work in reverse, that 16 fatty acid chain can get broken down into two carbon acetyl coas, which will then feed into the TCA cycle. But since we're working in the acetyl coa into the malonyl coa, eventually into the palmitial, uh, the palmitic acid. This is going to require NADPH, giving us our reused form of NADP. So the final result is going to be an increase in palmitic acid. Oh, fatty acid in alcoholic. That explains both our lack of acidemia, our metabolic acidosis there, and then also it'll explain our fatty change in the liver. Hopefully this makes a little more sense. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. If you have any comments, be sure, to, uh, be sure to comment. I always enjoy receiving comments. Like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you want more. Thank you very much.